The thought of being one's boss is very inspiring and many people are yearning and looking for the day they are going to be business owners. This is a reality for one, Chef Chikone, the owner of this beautiful restaurant. This is Founders Connect Africa. Thank you so much for having us here. You have a very good place. Thank you. It's beautiful, yeah? <laughs> now, in this time of um, the pandemic, uh, coronavirus, how has business been? Hey, to be honest, March, it was really bad. I almost packed and went back home yes. <laughs> to tell my much. mom yeah. I'll do the dishes and everything. You may keep up. Mm. But um, I think at uh, mid-May, things became a little better. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really helped us is all through even way before um, COVID, mm -hmm. we really tapped into deliveries, mm -hmm. not much into sittings, more more of into taking the food to our clients' homes and everything. Mm -hmm. So it helped us only that of course the numbers went down because like office guys were not working, so and they're mostly our clients. Mm -hmm. But I'm grateful that the business could sustain itself. Yeah. 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 Oh, great. Um, let's uh, start from the beginning. Um, tell us how you came up with Chap Chikoni. Oh, so right after campus, when I graduated. When what I was, was your graduation? Become. Become. Yeah, I majored okay. in sales and marketing. Yeah. So it's the sales and marketing is helping me now. <laughs> so right yeah. after I graduated, I was I think I was 21. Mm -hmm. I got my first job. The contract was six months, then mm -hmm. issue, then they renewed. So after six months, I felt yeah. I'm not in... I don't like this space I am in. I feel like there is more out there for me, yeah. so I need to figure it out. So I, I quit my job without any like specific plan, but yes. I knew that's not what I want. Yeah. I went, started a, a pork joint with someone. Mm -hmm. I was doing pork and fries. Mm -hmm. And then um, early now, this is he started in year 2016 now. Yeah. So early 2017, I felt like I'm not I'm not in line, yeah. so I took a step back, just stayed without a job or anything, mm. Mm. thinking about how I can do it better. So um, August 2017, I started house calls. So I was going to clients' houses, my bachelor, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cooking for them food for like the whole week mm -hmm. and storing in the fridge or freezer and then they mm. warm. And it was something really nice. Yeah. I had lots of clients. I mm -hmm. met mm -hmm. lots of people. How was your week like? So every day you had... Yeah, um, I had a client or even two. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you cook and yeah, I cook. Hey, I used to get tired. I was even <laughs> tired. <laughs> Uh -huh. By the time I get home, I'm so tired, I just eat fries or something and yeah, sleep. Yeah. But it was totally worth it. So with time, I got an assistant, mm -hmm. so he'd help me go on these jobs. And the best mm -hmm. part, on weekends now, we started getting outside catering jobs. So you have a party for 20, yes. you call us, you can cook, clean, serve, mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. And that's how we grew. Okay. And at the same time, I was growing my brand on social media. Yes. So it got to a point, the demand was way higher than what like I could. Like you get, you have five clients in a day. Yeah. Others even just want office lunch. Yes. So that's when um, I decided to now open this first branch. Mm -hmm. This is my KBB. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I started from, I started with here, that was last year, yeah. June. Yeah. Yeah. June. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cooking, has it always been in your blood? Has it always been in your veins? Even when you were young, has it been something that you've always wanted to do? Not really, to be honest, but I was a foodie, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was a foodie. Uh -huh. Then, um, my mom really made nice food. Mm -hmm. So, I really thought, um, I love food. Yeah. I also had started to love cooking. So, I thought, maybe I can make this my business. And for me, it makes me happy because every day, when I wake up, it feels like I'm being to aya. Unapenda kucheza, enda ucheze, tutakulipa. <laughs> so you see, yes. that's the vibe yes. for me. Okay. Mm. okay, so you have a big brand online. I see that you have a lot of following on Instagram and Facebook. Mm. How did you grow that? Okay, to In be honest, of, it just, you, you just realize yeah. people are following, following you. There's <laughs> nothing I did. I yeah. didn't um, buy followers or, or promote my content. Oh, and being consistent, by the way. I keep mm. telling entrepreneurs, even on those days you wake up and you're like, you know this life, I'm so done. Please. <laughs> Wake up, post something, yes. and go back to sleep. Yes. Just yes. be consistent. Because mm. if you post and you disappear for two weeks, guys, of course, the first days people will ask, 
chap ali end up but then with time people forget you and move on and they move on to another person so we we utashinda hapo ukikuwa inconsistent so just be consistent consistent in your posting um how much did you invest in especially this one when you were starting out this is about um 300 400 yeah and i have a partner so my yeah. partner is more into hesabu <laughs> yeah he yeah, hr yeah, yeah. cuz me aki let me tell you mimi <laughs> i'm too playful yeah. i don't know what kind of boss i am so yeah. Yeah. she she steps in for that yeah yeah and you streamlines yeah it's good to have a partner because as a person you can't be you can't have everything yeah. like for me i know i i have my weaknesses like I, like they have told you i can't keep that boss nini straight yeah. mm-hmm. i'll always joke around so i may tend to unafanya makosa na kuumia but now for hashes and then now with the books and everything yeah, yeah so for me it's food um customer service mm. talking to clients mm. feedback mm. coming up with recipes all that okay mm. so you started with this first one yeah. after you've done a couple of jobs outside how long yeah. did you take to, to, open to other yes to come here to open this first one oh. as you were doing those jobs so, outside so from 2017 august yeah. mm-hmm. then i opened this one 2019 june what have been the challenges that you face especially when you're starting to someone who wants to start the same business one challenge i'll tell you almost first every entrepreneur faces is satisfaction for your mm-hmm. clients mm-hmm. I don't know somehow no matter like how good you are you can't 100% satisfy, satisfy everyone mm-hmm. and sometimes you sleep at night and you feel bad but then sometimes you 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 just say put your best foot forward and equate to evil mm-hmm. cuz you know sometimes it's funny maybe two people eat the same food one mm-hmm. is like hey the food was superb i even want to take away for my fiance or my girlfriend yes. now is like i didn't like the food it was not nice the flavor was <laughs> pathetic and you know now so you just so turn your like it's the it's same right. food yeah. so you know you you try to apologize where you can yeah. and even maybe give a complimentary yeah. meal or something yeah. or even a refund yeah. just anything to make your client feel loved and appreciated mm-hmm. but at the end of the day sad news is that you can't 100% satisfy mm-hmm. everyone mm-hmm. also another thing which i feel um entrepreneurs need a little bit understanding is sometimes as a person and a brand you can be a very good person you work to deliver 100% but your system sometimes can fail you mm-hmm. like your staff yes. maybe someone who's in charge of customer service mm-hmm. so hitches here and there mm-hmm. and somehow inakwaribia yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know someone is like i thought you were amazing but i'm disappointed in yeah. you you know no yeah. so getting your whole support system for mm-hmm. your business to be at par with you sometimes yeah. is a little bit difficult mm-hmm. sometimes you feel like you want to split yourself into 10 people so that you do everything <laughs> so you can be able to create yeah yeah you like you like sour mm-hmm. sour you yeah. know yeah. Yeah. but it's impossible so mm-hmm. you just you just try train your team and everything mm-hmm. employees are like your babies <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you bring out the whip yes. <laughs> you know anyway sometimes I, you have talk to na pika kelele kidogo to yeah. tell them hey guys hapa mnaribu hapa yeah. and then when they also do nice please compliment yeah. them yeah. don't just sikuya kelele tu ndio you show up when they've done nice things you don't show up you're quiet only waiting for them to make mistakes so appreciate them and correct them when they make mistakes mm-hmm. and when you see um employee that has so much potential train them in the right way mm-hmm. grow them and everything and don't be afraid that they'll go and start your own thing riziki mm-hmm. yako ni yako you know yeah. if you go and open another chepchikon it's fine my customers are mine your customers are yours so yeah. don't be afraid not just there are people who fear showing uh, the employee yes, yeah because they're afraid that they're going to go and open another you shouldn't fear fear yeah. and business cannot be in the same sentence hmm? Yeah, two different sentences. Two di- hey, please. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, sometimes things are thick. Yes. You have not made anything but you put on a brave face and come and tell customer karibu, have something, you know. So, you have to be brave. Okay. Mm. So, what is next for you? I've studied the market. I've realized pork has a high demand, so it's my next target. I just want to open a nice pork joint. Pork. I will be client number one. Yes. <laughs> yes, I love uh-huh. Yeah, so um pork joint uh-huh. would work for me. Yeah. Then I'm I'm looking to now in the future before yeah. now I chill. I'm just yeah. looking to do now a nice mother restaurant for all this. So maybe your advice to someone who is at home watching and would like to start a business, especially when it comes to food. Mhm. 
Number one, start where you are with what you have. Stop limiting yourself because you feel you, no one ever has enough capital to start or resources or anything. So start where you are. Stop being afraid. Those steps that you're scared are going to get you where you should be, right? And also um, keep around you people that will will uplift you exactly keep around people that will push you and tell you do this do that do this so whatever um industry you're in if it's food look around for people who are doing well and make them your your friends right another thing always keep your business up to speed like what are the current trends do it what 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 do people like more do it you can't be selling 90s clothes to millennials you know yeah, yeah. yeah so keep up your business and as i said before consistency is everything even when you don't feel like you have the energy and everything just be consistent and leveraging on social media maybe. yeah 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 social hey my dear if you run a business right now and it's not on social media <laughs> what are you doing in your life yeah, yeah so social media is a thing yeah. and and last one feedback always get feedback from your clients just that text of hi how did you find the food it's just a simple text that will have a lot of impact they'll think they will think and know that you care about your business mm-hmm. and you also get something to improve you can't know everything yeah, even nice. me up to now i don't know some things mm-hmm. mob, so i need to always hear that yeah. yeah and also if someone tells you your food is great it encourages you and keeps you going so feedback is everything oh, feedback is mm-hmm. all right thank you so much thanks too yeah yeah. Now at least we can order something. Yes, oh. indulging o'clock. <laughs> indulging o'clock. Uh, today, by the way, we have special chicken. We have chicken in peanut sauce. Do you like peanuts? I love peanuts. Yeah, you can know. have that with some rice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Looks great. great. Mm-hmm. Those are, those are, those are then you can call out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kerubo, chicken and rice. When it comes to expansion, first of all, it's commendable. They've been able to grow beyond one branch yeah. into a second one. Uh, but one of the things that we always advise our clients when it comes to expansion is uh, putting a lot of focus on documenting procedures of how things are done in one restaurant versus the other. And when it comes to documenting procedures, it's really documenting everything <laughs> from how you open in the morning to how you take stock of the foods that are there, um, how you go about planning your meal, how you go about cooking so that you also have consistent quality. All these things need to be documented. And the reason uh, procedures need to be documented is because one day you may have Say Kennedy is doing the cooking and he does a good job, but then on the second day he's not there and somebody else comes and uses a different procedure, and then the food tastes different. So it's very important to maintain you know, quality standards and making sure there is consistency because to build a brand, people buy into the consistency. So they buy into the fact that the meat will always taste a certain way, the burger will always taste a certain way. So she needs to document all the procedures, how the cooking is done, how the waiting is done, uh, how the management of the restaurant is done, uh, probably even a documentation of the kind of clientele who come into that particular um, uh, uh, restaurant. And then she can compare both and see, are they actually dealing with the same clientele so that they can standardize how things are done in both shops. Uh, outside of documentation of procedures, it's very difficult to open more uh, because, uh, you know, as we said, if she opens two or three others and that consistency is lacking, you're likely to find a lot of challenges coming in. Uh, you're likely to find a lot of operational challenges as well. And the thing is that when you are expanding, you should actually be able to take advantage of economies of scale. And so she can, you know, um, procure centrally and make sure that she gets cheaper prices for the foods that they sell and these kinds of things but it all starts with the documentation of how things are run and then make sure that the staff in the different um, uh, restaurants actually follow that procedure to the letter and it has to become like holy grail to make sure that things are always done the same way Um, if she can be able to perfect that and you know recruiting people who are able to stick to those procedures then she can build a brand and you find that if say I'm in Kawasukari and I see her brand and I like the food, I will walk in because I know 
I'll find the same consistency as what I find in industrial area or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, any other location. And that's how, you know, your KFCs and the like have done it. Mm -hmm. With time, she can adopt slightly more sophisticated um, procedures of making sure that the ingredients are done centrally and then shipped to the different uh, places, but they'll have now a consistent quality, uh, which is what your larger restaurants are able to do. Mm -hmm.